We are delighted to be here with you today to discuss reading supports for students with learning disabilities. During today's webinar, we are going to discuss the impact that lack of exposure to text can have on struggling readers. We are also going to discuss ways that text-to-speech tools and audiobooks can be used to increase exposure to text and to support independent reading abilities. I am Tara Montgomery, an instructional coach at Hyde Park Day School. Presenting with me today are Kate Baldwin, our Director of Research, and Therese Jillick, our Director of Technology. During this webinar, I will talk about the relationship between daily reading practice, vocabulary development, and reading comprehension. Kate will share current research on the use of audiobooks and text-to-speech tools, and Therese will introduce tools we are using with students at Hyde Park Day School. I would like to start our conversation by discussing the need for reading supports for dyslexic students. Students who struggle in reading read less than more able readers. In fact, the amount of time students spend reading out of school is highly correlated with their scores on standardized reading tests. Anderson, Wilson, and Fielding found that at the highest end of the continuum, the most able readers, or those scoring at the 98th percentile on standardized tests, were reading more than 60 minutes per day on average, while students who scored at the 10th percentile were reading less than one minute per day outside of school on average. This chart shows the relationship between the amount of time spent reading and the number of words a student is exposed to over the course of a year. This is significant because students gain both vocabulary knowledge and general knowledge from reading. Students who read 20 minutes per day will be exposed to almost 2 million words per year. Students who read less than one minute per day are exposed to a paltry 8,000 words per year. Keith Stanovich from the University of Toronto, Ontario applied the term Matthew effect to describe the impact that different reading rates have on students over time. The Matthew effect refers to the Bible verse, Matthew 25, 29, which can be paraphrased, the rich will get richer while the poor will get poorer. Better readers read more, which improves their reading ability and vocabulary. Poor readers read less, which causes them to lag even farther behind in reading skill and vocabulary acquisition. Reading volume contributes to vocabulary growth and reading comprehension. The difference is both quantitative and qualitative. Students typically add between 2,000 to 3,500 new words to their vocabulary per year. These words cannot all be taught directly in class. Many of these words are acquired through reading. Isabel Beck, Margaret McKeown, and Linda Kukan categorize words in their book, Bringing Words to Life. Tier 1 vocabulary words are basic. These words can be learned in conversation. Tier 2 vocabulary words are more sophisticated. They are found frequently in written text, but they are not used frequently in oral language. Students need to recognize and understand Tier 2 vocabulary words to be successful academically. We expose young children to rich vocabulary by reading aloud to them. Library story times, classroom read-alouds, and bedtime story rituals have a significant impact on the vocabulary and comprehension skills of children because they expose students to books that are rich in vocabulary and more sophisticated sentence structure. As students get older, around third or fourth grade, read-alouds in school and at home typically decrease and students who are not reading independently can lose access to vocabulary-rich literature. A very real concern is that dyslexic students who have stronger comprehension skills in the early grades may develop a comprehension deficit over time due to lack of exposure to grade level text. A natural response to this information is to encourage students to read more. Incentive programs are hugely popular in schools, and you may be familiar with some of these, such as Drop Everything and Read, Six Flags Read to Succeed, and the Pizza Hut Book It program. However, the National Reading Panel report in 1999 found that incentive programs that encourage students to read on their own were not effective for struggling readers, 
because they didn't do anything to remove the barriers that were preventing these students from reading and understanding what they read. We need to provide support that makes reading time beneficial for struggling readers. One option is for a parent or teacher to read out loud to the student, and we do encourage parents to continue bedtime read-alouds at home. But if our goal is independence, how do we help struggling readers increase the amount of time that they spend reading? More and more educators are using text-to-speech tools. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Kate, who will discuss current research on this topic. Good morning, I'm Kate Baldwin, the Research Director. What I'm going to do is share with you some of the research that has convinced us at Hyde Park Day School that having audiobooks and other text-to-speech systems available is an important way to support the reading instruction that we offer your children. As Tara said, we know that the more kids read, the more they learn, and that even small increases in reading time can make a big difference when they're carried out over a whole year. But of course, when your child has dyslexia or another reading-related learning disability, getting them to read more is easier said than done. What's more, when they do read, they're likely to be reading material that's at their decoding level rather than at their comprehension level. The words that they encounter in material at that level are simpler and more common, and so even the reading that is being done isn't stretching the student's language capacities as much as it might be. We believe that audiobooks are part of the solution to that conundrum. Audiobooks first entered the general market in the early 1990s. They're the most commonly available form of what are generally called text-to-speech systems, which is text that is being read aloud either by a human voice or by a computer-generated one. Audiobooks have exploded in popularity, and by last year, more than 40% of Americans had listened to at least one. The popularity of audiobooks among people of all ages attracted the attention of teachers and educational psychologists and produced a surge in research efforts on what using them does to people's minds and particularly to their reading skills. The research that's being done has investigated a whole range of questions about the use of text-to-speech systems. Questions like, how does hearing words affect your brain differently than seeing words does? Is comprehending complex spoken language more difficult than comprehending written text? Is it easier? Does listening to an audiobook have the same benefits for students' minds as reading a book does? Is it really reading, or is it something else? Fortunately for us, the result of all that research has produced a very consistent and very positive picture of the effects of exposure to text read aloud. Here are some of the most important results. First, the research has shown that struggling readers who get access to an audio version of a textbook, as well as the written version, do significantly better when they're tested on the information being taught than do students who have access to just the written version. This makes intuitive sense. When students don't have to concentrate on decoding, they can direct all their attention to comprehending the material that's being discussed and integrating it with what they already know, which is what improves their memory for the material. A second important finding is that experiencing books in both print and voice formats increases the size of a child's vocabulary. In fact, in a large research study that was done in the Boston and San Diego public schools, Students who used audiobooks to supplement their reading for as short a time as just four to six weeks increased their vocabulary more than control groups who used text alone. As Tara mentioned, the most important factor in children's vocabulary growth is the sheer number of words they're exposed to in a context that allows them to figure out the word's meaning. What audiobooks do is expose struggling readers to words at rates that are a lot higher than what their decoding speed would allow, and that is what produces the vocabulary growth. Third result is that giving students access to spoken materials also affects their feelings about reading, about school, and about education in general. As many of you know, children with dyslexia often find the school experience difficult and frustrating. Many studies have documented that students with difficulty reading 
tend to have a higher incidence of low self-esteem, anxiety, and depression. And nationally, students with dyslexia graduate from high school and college at lower rates than students without. Some recent studies that have looked at what happens when students use audio materials for relatively long periods of time, at least half a school year or more, have shown a variety of positive emotional effects from reduced anxiety and reduced behavioral problems to greater enjoyment of school and increased ambitions for further education. This line of research suggests that exposure to audiobooks isn't just a short-term academic intervention, but a practice that it's valuable to integrate into a student's ordinary life. Finally, numerous research results indicate that exposure to audio texts produces significant improvements in both the accuracy and the speed of children's visual reading, whether it's done silently or out loud. And this effect is especially strong when audio texts are combined with visual reading. Now this seems surprising. How can it be that listening to texts improves a child's visual reading? The primary reason this works has to do with how words, and language in general, are represented in the brain. Everything we know about a particular word is connected to everything else we know about it. And whenever we encounter that word in any form, that reinforces the common representation of the word in our minds and strengthens our memory for it. So, for example, let's consider the word infinite, which is one of those more sophisticated tier two vocabulary words that Tara was discussing earlier. A person who knows this word knows a lot of things about it. How it sounds, what it looks like written on a page, how it's spelled, and what it means, including the fact that it can be used in a lot of different ways. It has an ordinary language meaning, it has a metaphorical meaning, and it has various technical meanings that apply in mathematical and scientific contexts. And in addition to this, the word has cultural and emotional associations that may be different for every individual, but often very powerful. Why students with learning disabilities benefit from a multi-sensory approach to reading instruction. The more different routes or channels we can establish into a word's representation in the mind, the stronger the memory for that word becomes, and these stronger memories are then more easily accessed in all contexts, including in visual reading and in writing. Here are a couple of things I want to note about the research on the use of text-to-speech systems. Most of the studies I've summarized were done on kids with reading-related learning disabilities. But similar research has also been done with students who read at grade level, and the results are very much the same, although the benefits of audio access are even stronger for struggling readers. Second, it's important to know that students in the audio access conditions of these studies weren't restricted to the use of audio texts. They would usually be combining audio with visual reading, sometimes at the same time and sometimes not. Reading while listening is a very valuable activity, and students with learning disabilities can really benefit from this kind of multi-sensory experience that provides auditory reinforcement to the visual decoding process. But as we've discussed, listening to complex text provides a whole slew of benefits in addition to increasing reading fluency, so it's certainly not necessary for a student to follow along every time they listen to an audiobook. And for the purposes of developing listening comprehension and higher level critical thinking skills, audiobooks on their own are great. Although this perception is waning, thankfully, there is still an impression among some parents and even some teachers that accessing text through listening is somehow cheating, that it's a short-term fix that does long-term damage to children's ability to read. But as we've seen, that isn't a perception that is supported by the research, and I hope that what we've presented today has reassured people on that point. I'd just like to leave you with an insight from this year's Assistive Technology Association conference. Text-to-speech is more than an accommodation. It has remedial potential. 
In other words, using text-to-speech systems doesn't just make reading easier in the moment, it helps to improve reading ability itself over the long term. And that's why we at Hyde Park Day School are so committed to providing your children with access to audiobooks and other text-to-speech systems. And now I'm going to pass the microphone over to Therese Chillick, our Director of Technology, so she can show you how we put that commitment into practice. Welcome, everybody. Assistive technology is like a key. It unlocks access to learning materials. Today, we're going to look at five different keys or programs that provide reading support for our students. One thing I'd like you to keep in mind is that not all students need all of these programs. Throughout the year, our teachers help your students figure out which programs they need. Our goal for today is to help you understand the programs that have been identified as beneficial for our students. Before we dive into the programs, I want to point out some terminology that's associated with assistive technology. We can think of it like tissue is to puffs and Kleenex. There are general terms, and then there are brand name products. Like Kleenex, some people bounce that name around to refer to any tissue. It's the same with assistive technology. Sometimes people interchange general terms with brand names. Text-to-speech is a general term, and there are two kinds, computer-read and human-read. This is a list of the brand name programs we use at Hyde Park Day School that all have text-to-speech. Many of them have additional features as well. Over the next few minutes, we are going to demonstrate how a student uses each of these programs to access materials. This is Ian. He's a fourth grade student with dyslexia. He decodes at a first grade level, but has a listening comprehension level at fifth grade. There are two main resources Ian uses to learn, novels and websites. We will take a look at how the use of assistive technology changes the learning experience for each of these resources. If Ian were to go to the library and choose a book just based on his independent reading level, his options would be books like Curious George. These books use many sight words and the vocabulary is easier. These are words like and, to, mother, and fast. However, Ian is really interested in the BFG, which his other friends are reading. The spelling and length of the hard copy book is a challenge, but as Tara and Kate pointed out, it's important for students to read more per day and to have exposure to tier two vocabulary. So let's talk about how Ian can reap the benefits of reading the BFG and enjoy a great book. First, he can use Learning Ally. It's a library of human read audiobooks. All of our students have accounts. This is what it would look like for Ian. Some of the audiobooks come with text, which students can customize. They can change things related to the font, the display, and color, as well as the volume and speed. To read the story, they just need to hit the play button. The Snatch. Under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeked out. For the second time that night, her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There, at the window, with the curtains pushed aside, was the enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face of the giant person staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. The next... Learning Ally added a new feature, which is a dictionary. When students double click on a word, they can find the definition as well as add a note. Yeah, at the window. They can go back and look at these notes later. This is a perfect example of what we mean by multi-sensory. 
It involves reading text, listening, and the experience is embedded in rich context and robust vocabulary, such as enormous, wrinkly, and flashing black eyes. This reinforces learning through the senses, through the eyes, through the ears, by accessing prior knowledge, but also bringing in emotions and associations. Bookshare is another resource Ian can use. It is a library of digital books that can be read with a text reader. All of our students have accounts to Bookshare as well, but they mostly use other tools to read the books. Bookshare is important, especially for transition if students do not have access to other tools that have more feature supports. And Bookshare is free for students with learning disabilities. Here's an example of how Ian would listen to the BFG with WebReader, a basic text reader that Bookshare provides for students with individual accounts. Students can customize Bookshare in the settings. They can change the font, the font size, color, display, rate of speech, and voice. Click the speech icon to start and stop. The snatch. Under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There at the window, with the curtains pushed aside, was the enormous long pale wrinkly face of the giant person, staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. This is basically the same experience, but with a different voice. You may also find that some students have preferences for human read versus computer read. And while preference is valuable, comprehension may be better with one over the other. Again, our teachers help our students figure this out. The other thing to consider is that a person or human read material may not be available. So teaching students that computer read text-to-speech is good helps them achieve independence with their learning. A new program we are starting to use is called CAPTI. It is an offline and online reading support tool. To access novels with CAPTI, students need that Bookshare account. Let's see how Ian would read the BFG with CAPTI. Students can pull in material to CAPTI in a variety of different ways. They can upload it, they can pull it from their Google Drive, and other places like Bookshare. Students can also customize CAPTI and choose from a variety of different voices and adjust the speed. Next, they can customize the way the text looks. They can change the font, they can choose how the text is displayed on the page, as well as the background color and the color of the highlighter. Then, with the click of a button, they can read. The snatch under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There at the window, with the curtains pushed aside, was the enormous long pale wrinkly face of the giant person, staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. There are other great supports. So students can look up any word instantly. A mythical human of very great size, specifically, any of the Gigantes, the race of giants in the Greek mythology, a very tall, tall person. person. And add them to their dictionary. They also have the ability to highlight and take notes. Mm -hmm. 
Notice there are additional features, such as a dictionary, highlighting, and annotating, that also benefit students who need these supports. So Learning Ally, Bookshare, and CAPTI are three programs we use with students to help them access novels. Next, we'll explore how Ian uses assistive technology to read websites from the internet. Let's say Ian's teacher assigns a research paper and wants the students to find information about animals. Ian chooses his topic, animals that have jobs. He finds a great article about a puppy named Riley who works in a museum keeping the artwork bug-free. Let's pull up the website. It's a great article from a credible resource and it's written at the fifth grade reading level. The vocabulary is more advanced too, with words like Weimariner, textile, remarkable, and anonymous. With one click on a side toolbar, Ian can turn on a program called Snap and Read. Here's what Ian's reading experience transforms into. Snap and Read is a toolbar that's off to the side. Students can click on options and change their settings. They can change the colors of the highlighter. They can change the voice and things related to the voice, such as speed and pitch. They can turn on the reading level icon and the dictionary. You can see here, this website is at grade five, which is perfect for Ian. Then when students click on the speech icon, they can select what they want to read and begin. Bugs in a museum are no small problem. Moths can eat delicate textiles. Those textiles include wool. It includes silk. And it includes cotton. Beetles can burrow into wooden objects. That's not... Snap and Read also has a text leveler. When students can highlight a section and it will change difficult vocabulary. So here you can see hard shelled insects was substituted for the word beetle and dig an underground tuttle was substituted for the word burrow. Snap and Read also has dictionary. By double clicking a word, students can see the definition as well as pictures related to that definition. We have another program that Ian can use called Read and Write for Google Chrome. It also can be turned on with one click and has some different comprehension support features. Here is what Ian's experience would be like with Read and Write for Google Chrome. Read and Write for Google Chrome is a floating toolbar with many different features in addition to text-to-speech. Students can customize a few options for text-to-speech, including the voice and the speed. When they click on Hover Speech, they can click on any part of the text and begin reading. Bugs in a museum are no small problem. Moths can eat delicate textiles. Those textiles include wool. It includes silk. And it includes cotton. Beetles can burrow into wooden objects. There's also a dictionary. Where students can read the definitions as well as a picture, di picture dictionary where they can see pictures related to the word. CAPTI is the third program that Ian can use. In this demo, notice how CAPTI pulls out the clutter from websites. As you can see, there are a lot of ads on this website and links to social media, which can be distracting for some students. With the click of a button, students can send this website to CAPTI. And remove all of the ads and clutter. 
The last time we looked at CAPD, we went over the different voices, ways to customize the text. We talked about the ability to look up words and highlight and take notes. I chose a different voice this time so you can hear what a different one sounds like. Bugs in a museum are no small problem. Moths can eat delicate textiles. Those textiles include wool. It includes silk. And it includes cotton. Beetles can burrow into wooden objects. That's not... Now, if you recall, Ian was doing a research paper. So, he can take notes... And then when he's ready to write his paper, he can go back and find all of his notes. So these are the five main programs with text-to-speech that our students use at Hyde Park Day School. Let's recap. Using text-to-speech to access learning materials, give students access to material at or above their grade level, enriches their vocabulary development, reinforces comprehension, and builds the confidence students need to become independent learners. We'd like to wrap up our webinar by clarifying some of the responsibilities that come with choosing assistive technology and emphasize that not all students need all of these tools all of the time. Let's talk about the teacher first. The teacher is responsible for the process of matching the assistive technology to the student. They are also responsible for teaching the student how to use it. Like learning to read, learning to use assistive technology takes time and changes as the student's needs change. Students have the responsibility of using and advocating for the use of their assistive technology. The third group is parents. We ask that you know which tools your students use and have a general understanding of what they are which was the hope we had for this webinar. This information comes to you through the ILP process and your student's teacher. Last, it's everyone's responsibility to communicate with each other. As we wrap up, I would love to share the story that led to the title of this presentation. Our school board president, Janet Hoffman, has a daughter who was diagnosed with learning disabilities at a young age. Her first speech therapist was Elaine Dunn Engel. The simple advice that Elaine gave to Janet was this, fill her ears with words. Janet's daughter is now grown up, but she loved the stories she heard as a child so much that she is sending copies of her favorite stories as audiobooks to the younger children in her extended family. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of the reading supports we use here at Hyde Park Day School. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us or your students' teachers at any time. Thank you and have a great rest of the day.